I came up with a riff. I actually uh, had this one just like pop in my head, so kind of have this all mapped out already, which is, it's happened before. Yeah though, so I'm gonna do this and uh, it's gonna be like C major. Well, it's actually gonna be in a mode because I'm gonna base it around the F, but um, yeah, so verse riff is gonna be the same as the chorus riff, except varying intensity. That'll be the verse. The chorus is just going to be same exact thing. Chord-wise, that is, but it's going to be just a little bit more intense, like I said. Um, I think I'll do like a big uh, G. Just like hold it for two measures, and that'll be like my transition from verse to chorus. But otherwise, that should be about it. So this is original Christian rock. I come up with a part on the guitar usually, and I just build around it. So I have a song outline I like to follow a lot of times, and I can just tweak it per song. It's usually just verse, chorus, repeat three times. But like I said, I'll add a pre-chorus here. Or I'll change it to doing other things or key changes or what have you. This one's just going to be straightforward. I got a drum loop going. That's there to keep time. It'll disappear when I actually sit down and play a part. I prefer it to the uh, loud, obnoxious click. I only have to deal with that when I'm playing the drums, and I'm happy about that. It's freezing in here. I got a little electric heater over there, but it's uh, it's like single-digit temperatures Fahrenheit, not Celsius. It's cold. <laughs> it's supposed to uh, possibly snow tonight, like a big major snowstorm, so we'll see. Anyway, it's... Uh, 10 of 1. I want to get this going. I'm probably not going to get to the vocals before the thing I listen to on Sundays comes on. Um, I listened to the live stream coming out of uh, Faith Center in Glendale, California. I have a link at the top of my description box, so if you check that, you can like see it. They have a website, YouTube channel, an app that streams 24-7, and there's really super awesome stuff coming out of there. I talk about it literally every video, usually a little bit more extensively at the end of the videos, but for right now, I want to get started writing music, so here I go. I was doubling up, well, I guess not doubling because the last two choruses are the same length or they were intended to be. The first one I was going to do like a half chorus, so I just do like two times through the repetition of the chord progression and then four times on the other ones, but something happened in my brain. I forgot what I was playing. <laughs> and on the fourth one, I just went and then went to an A major. I'm going to leave it though because why not? It's interesting. So yeah, as long as I make everything flow around it, Sounds like it was on purpose. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to double this up on... Oh, you know what? I'm going to do something different. Maybe I do. I'm gonna do some dubs, so it's just gonna be like easy lead parts. I better check my tuning because the heat's been cranking and it's probably flat. All right, close enough. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do like. The right side dub is going to be a bunch of doubled octaves just to fill out the chords. So I'll do like the fifth on the uh, F major chord. 
same thing on the A minor chord. Then I go to D, so I'll do the third, and then C, so I'll do the fifth again. I'm now going to improvise a guitar solo. I think I'm going to start on that mess up at the end of the second chorus I did. So it'll just be a three time repetition and then I'll do this little transition into the solo. So it'll be like. So I just deleted the drum loop like an idiot and made the drum track for the electronic drums. And uh, I'm also doing this arpeggiator, which just goes underneath. I plug in the notes of the chords and it plays stuff and it sounds cool. I've been doing it the last couple songs, but uh, I guess uh, just being in a hurry to get this done, I uh, yeah just deleted that and <laughs> didn't record the bass guitar. So I guess at least you're going to get an example of why I prefer to play the drum loop because now I just have the uh, click. So yeah, it's going to suck, but... <laughs> Here we go. Well, whoa, what the heck happened? Okay, so yeah, here's what's gonna happen. I just did the arpeggiator because why not? I already made the track. I'm gonna play drums now though. So yeah, that's a little backwards. I'm gonna do the arpeggiator afterwards, but who cares? Checking, checking, checking. I went in and watched the uh, live stream. So it's actually an hour later and the temperature has uh, dropped. It's about to snow if it hasn't already. My weather app said uh, like 10 minutes till the snow would start when I came out here again. Anyway, I have a melody. I typed up some lyrics. I'm gonna try and just blast through this thing. That's good so here are the lyrics oops don't cancel and delete so these are going to be in the description box um right above the lyrics in the description box you're going to see a bunch of places where you can purchase and stream my music it's the usual stuff you'd expect above that is going to be pastor melissa scott i mentioned that earlier that's faith center in glendale california has a pastor her name is pastor melissa scott she took over from her late husband dr gene scott the ministry has been going for a very long time he took over in the 70s went to 2005 he passed away she took over after that the teaching coming out of there is absolutely excellent. Most places have weird skewed views on what religion is and what Christianity is and they're trying to put their subjective opinions on top of the Bible, twist the scriptures and make them fit their viewpoints. This church doesn't do that. They just take the text, all of it, in context. Text out of context is error, so don't do that. They don't do it. They take it in context. They go into the original language because a lot of uh, translations, people go over and over and over and over what translation you should use use like King James versus the uh, Amplified versus the NIV versus whatever. The Message Bible may be an exception to this, but they're all okay, but 
they're all going to have a lack or an advantage somewhere because you can't perfectly translate from the original languages into another language. It just doesn't work like with any language. The Message Bible is a disaster, so don't even go to that, but <laughs> just saying. Yeah, though, so they go to the original languages just because there's some transmissions or transmission loss. And if you take the time to analyze it and really explain what's going on with the grammar and whatnot, you can get to the meaning of things. And it's super helpful because it really helps out your faith because a lot of things that have come into the church are just simply because of simple things like doctrinal errors because people are taking translations and screwing it up. The one I always say is faith, the Baptists, and whatnot have once saved, always saved as their doctrine aside from the baptism thing. They like to say it's a one-time act because faith in English is a noun. Faith in Greek and in Hebrew, Hebrew has three words. Greek, it's one word. Greek is pistis. It's an action verb. It's ongoing and continuous. The Greek words imply something like leaning on a staff, running to a shelter, or seeing the circumstance. And in spite of that circumstance, you place your trust and faith on top of as in higher importance and rely on that rather than what you see coming at you. The pistis thing in Greek is like ongoing and continuous. It's an action verb. So when it's written in Romans that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit for your faith, that faith has to be active, has to be ongoing and continuous. You are acting in faith. Acting implies action, but the faith action that you are doing is referring back to the Old Testament definitions. You're placing God's word in higher importance and you're hanging your entire being on that rather than what you see in the world or the circumstance coming at you. And there's various ways to act in faith. So you have a sickness. You say, God can get me through this because healing is in the atonement. You hear good teaching in the word, just like Paul explains in Galatians 6, 6, you pay the teacher who taught you in the word because the tithe in the Old Testament is a tithe. And it, the tithe comes before the law. It's all the way back to the garden. The tree was God's. It was his right to say, this is mine, don't touch. They did it anyway. The first murder was over giving. And so on and so forth. Giving comes up all the way through the Bible. And it's giving God's way, not doing it your own way. Giving God's way in the New Testament is giving to the teacher who taught you in the word. Acting in faith can be all of the above and uh, it can just be like hanging in the word studying more and more and just trusting god and having a developing ongoing relationship with god with jesus christ as your savior that's acting in faith it's not a bunch of external works in the flesh where you're going to go out and give to charity or like, there's nothing wrong with giving to charity or like going to a food bank or anything but understand if you're going to use the old law as a type as a schoolmaster which is what it should be for us then you realize that god had charity built in he even had it for the animals but the gleanings of the field the ox was allowed to graze on the food as they were plowing that's charity in the old testament but charity is not giving to the one who teaches you in the word and it's not the high importance that God places on say like the burnt offering which is what it kind of is that's how it transfers into the New Testament and before you say oh the tithe is the law so you can't give anymore the very first Christians were a koinonia community and they gave a hundred percent that was almost like first fruits. They gave everything. We're just going to give to the teacher taught us in the word. It's recognition of God's authority to say that what I have, God provides for me. So I'm going to give this back. So that's the thing. God loves a hilarious giver. It says that in the Bible. And also the only way you can please God is with faith. Act in faith continually develop a relationship with God through like a uh, prayer, studying the word, through listening to good teaching, which follow the link and you'll find it. Look to the woman with the alabaster box mentioned in the gospels, giving to Jesus. The disciples are like, why this waste? We could have given it to the poor. That's your whole thing right there. Judas is the one wanting to give the charity. Jesus says, shut up. She did a good thing for me. Well, he didn't say it exactly. Although maybe he did. The King James makes it sound a little more polite. He probably actually said, shut up. She did a good thing for me. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, uh, giving God's way is recognizing God's authority, knowing that anything you have in this world is provided by God, so you don't place importance on it. You're giving the best you have to the teacher who taught you in the Word, knowing that God can provide everything you need. That's how it should be done. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Scriptures. Keep studying. The more you do, the more you can understand it. And how do you get to know God? By staying in the Word. That's the way you get to know God. If you're in a relationship with God and you're acting in faith, you need to know how God behaves, how God acts, how God speaks, what God has done for you. Because uh, if you don't understand that, how can you love God? You know, just stay in the word, 
find good teaching, click the link, you'll find it. But if it's not going to be there and you do have somewhere that is really, you know, giving you the spiritual food you need, that's fine. Go there too. But be aware that if you're going any place that they're not placing God's word and what God has done as the highest importance and it's more focused on the self and like, say, cleaning yourself up before you come to God, you don't have to clean yourself up before you come to God. Jesus did all the work. Jesus paid the price. Jesus took our punishment. If you continue to act in faith and the Holy Spirit is given to you, God is the one who is changing you because it's the new life of God placed in you and those traits come out. Those traits are going to be giving love and forgiveness. Don't let someone tell you it's some like weird, bizarre, mystical stuff. So you don't need any external outward signs. If you're trusting and faithing in Jesus, you're saved. That's it. Don't let anyone tell you differently. God is going to start working on you. So you don't have to worry about changing your behavior because God will do it. Trust in God. He'll start changing you. The only thing you need to do is faith continuously. And even the thing where I said, like paying the teacher and stuff, if the life of God is placed in you and you keep faithing and trusting in God, that giving nature is going to start to come out. It's just a manifestation of the new life within you. So you can't fake it. You can't force it. So don't even bother trying. I'll uh, stop talking and get this going. And even with these gloves on, my hands are starting to get frozen. <laughs> Jeez. So... Yeah, I'm going to try and do this and uh, hit save before the snow falls because I want to shut my computer down in case uh, we get crazy snow and the power goes out. So, yeah. Anyway, see you later. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, share, and bye. That's good Just glow for your just in